evening to you, traveller. I see you have come to hear one of my many tales. They say time is a precious thing that should be cherished before it's lost. I invite you to pull up a seat and let me tell you a story I like to call On Time. Vigastown is the last station on the main line before the terminus at Barrow Inverness on the mainland. To celebrate the station's centenary, the FAC controller had arranged for the central platform clock tower to overgo a major overhaul. One morning, Edward was telling Thomas and Percy about the clock tower. Oh yes, I remember when they first put in the clock tower. It was to commemorate Queen Victoria's visit to Sodor. You know, they say something special is supposed to happen at midday on the anniversary. But I can't for the life of me remember what it was. Oh come on Edward, you can't just leave it at that. Oh, I'm sorry you do. If I could remember, I'd tell you. Oh, well, I suppose half a story is better than nothing. But Percy was curious about what was supposed to happen and eventually talked his crew into going to Vickerstown. And so, Percy found himself sitting under the clock tower, eagerly waiting. His driver checked his watch and, as if on cue, the clock began to strike. Percy counted every strike, trying to see if something would happen, but nothing appeared to happen. Suppose you might as well get back to work, eh, hey, driver? Driver? Fireman? Are you okay? But neither the driver nor the fireman said anything. They just continued to stare at the clock tower. As Percy looked around, he noticed something strange. Thicker's town was normally very busy, but it had suddenly gone very quiet. Then Percy noticed something else. Everyone in the station was like his crew silent and motionless, as if they were a part of a photo. As Percy looked around, he noticed that some of the people were in very strange positions. A man looked as if he was walking across the platform, a woman was looking at her watch, and Percy could even see the fat controller in the station buffet, sitting at a table with a large jam scone close to his mouth. <sighs> What's going on? Why isn't anyone moving? Then Percy looked up, and his mouth hung open wide. High above him was Harold the helicopter, looking as if he was sat on his helipad at Dryon. Yet Percy knew that to be impossible. Percy was incredibly scared. He wanted to run away, but knew that he couldn't without his crew, who continued to stand, staring at the motionless clock tower. Percy waited for what seemed like years to him, alone, yet not alone, for he had the Frozen for company. Eventually, Percy heard the clock begin to strike, and as the final chime struck, everything seemed to unfreeze. The man continued walking across the platform, the woman lowered her wrist, the fat controller bit into his jams gone, and Harold resumed flying. As far as Percy could tell, no one knew that they had been frozen in time. Man, what a jip. So much for Edward's something special. Come on, Percy, let's go home. Percy decided not to tell his crew or Thomas and Toby about what he'd seen. Somehow, he didn't think they'd believe him if he told them that he had seen them be frozen in time. Percy still visits Vickers Town Station but he vowed never to visit it at midday on the anniversary of the clock tower's building. 
And, so far as he knows, time on Sodor has continued to tick on merrily. And speaking of time, the clock doth toll the hour, and I must return to my work. Fare thee well, traveller, and take care on your journey, for, between you and me, I'd rather not...